your first Uber. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our very special evening. Uh, we're Paul and Christian of Paul and Christian Associates, and we're thrilled to be at a sneak preview of one of our upcoming listings here at 84 Joycey Boulevard in the Prime Crick Club. So I'm going to pass it over to Christian to uh, make an introduction to our very, very, very special guest this evening. I was going to say, more than just being at a sneak preview of a new listing, we're actually in a top chef's kitchen, speaking of a chef's kitchen, with Grant Van Gameren, who's joining us tonight for one of our first experiential uh, events we're launching. Paul and I have already been brainstorming and we are looking forward to the next one as well. But today, we're very, very excited to have Grant with us. Grant has already successfully in the past done events with us. Mm -hmm. So Grant, over to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, welcome, welcome, thanks for joining us. Uh, today, we are gonna cook some stuff. Uh, we're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get a recipe at the end. We're really just talking about how to cook a few different types of foods and tips and tricks. Um, and we're gonna start with uh, a lot of people's favorite, which is a really good quality steak. Uh, from Cumbrae's, a beautiful aged ribeye. Uh, we're also gonna do a simple side potato dish um, that you can whip up at home uh, very easily. And then we're also gonna do uh, an appetizer of just a ceviche, so a ceviche verde, uh, which is uh, a raw marinated uh, fish and, and actually cooked by citrus. Uh, it's a dish where, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people are intimidated to, to try making it at home. Uh, you know, whenever you're dealing with something like a raw fish, um, and uh, you know, I just want to kind of go over the basic techniques and kind of what's going on when you're actually cooking it with acid. So that, because um, it's a really fun dish just for entertaining at home in the spring and the summer when the weather's hot, you know, with a cold beer. But before um, Grant was on camera with all of you, Paul and I were discussing um, Grant's career and Grant was saying, actually, this didn't start as a passion at all. This yeah. started as purely a job, working hard, working your way up and then all of a sudden becoming creative, becoming a passion and marrying yeah. somebody who shares the same passion as you. That's right. I mean, you know, like I started at Pizza Pizza when I was 16. That was my introduction to the food world and uh, yeah, food world. And uh, then I went to Harvey's and Yogan Fruits and you know, I didn't grow up in a family that was really built around food and you know, um, kind of that culture of, you know, cooking at home with your grandmother. Uh, didn't really grow up with that. And so for me, cooking has been about a job that I have uh, been good at. And uh, you know, in my early 20s, I kind of woke up and everyone was graduating university and college with you know chemistry degrees and and I had only work, ever worked in a kitchen. And you know, it was that time in my life where it was like, you know what, this is all I know. I'm gonna put my head down and I'm gonna do the best I can. And then, you know, five or so years later, I opened up the Black Hoof and Bar Isabel and Bar Raval. An inspiration to consumers, to probably other chefs around the city, not only for your talent in the kitchen, but also design and how you bring um, a community together. My actual job is I create experiences. You know, the people that work at the restaurants, we create experiences. That's what we're doing. The way we do that is through food and drink, right? So when people come to your house, you know, uh, for a dinner, it's, you know, what you're really doing is creating that experience and whether it's through the music, the lighting, you know, um, all that kind of stuff, the food, the wine, you know, that is your vessel for creating that experience. So, you know, we're gonna have lots of time to talk over the next hour to you and to you, but I do want to get talking about the steak quickly because uh, we're gonna be cooking it differently from the way you normally would cook it or a lot of people cook at home. So. Um, and this, this kind of, you know, steak is very dear to me because this is a very expensive steak. I was going to say dear than to your heart this, or to your pocket. This is like a two month age steak from Cumbrae's. It's not cheap, you know, and it's a beautiful piece of Ontario beef that has been aged um, and, um, you know, it's thick and it's a ribeye. So it's, you know, one of the primest cuts. It's one of the only steaks I really enjoy eating. You know, it's my go-to steak because uh, most of the hard work has been done here, right? You know, this is the king of steaks in my book. Paul and I almost fell out for a chair when we saw the price of that steak, <laughs> number yeah, one. Yeah. So what should we be looking at when we go to the store, to the butcher actually, because we buy our steaks from butchers. Paul and I both like to yeah. support uh, local businesses. So what should we look at when we choose a steak? 
So, I mean, you know, it's great. You know, the thing about cooking steak is it's good to know the meat you're cooking with. You know, because oftentimes if I go to a big, you know, food store and grab a steak, I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it's been frozen or, you know, what kind of quality. And, and oftentimes you can try cooking and it's just like, it'll all of a sudden overcook and you've barely touched it with heat, right? So, you know, this is like finished on corn, so it's gonna be fattier. You know, there's grass fed beef, um, you know, that uh, that's gonna be leaner and grassier, right? So, but I'm just gonna get this in the oven because that's how we're cooking it today. We're gonna do a reverse sear uh, steak, okay? Uh, do we do somersaults at this point? Yeah, no, for sure. And you know, I, I haven't cooked a lot of it this way, but um, the thing about steak is I prefer cooking a steak on a cast iron pan, okay, in my home. And uh, you know, the problem with this is that any exhaust hood, you know, right. You have to cook this thick steak, hot heat, smoking, um, to get that beautiful crust fire you know, for like 10 alarm. minutes, right? So uh, most houses are gonna smoke up the fire alarm. You'll get out the pillow, you'll start, you know, jumping on the chair, right? You know, I'm gonna do this quickly, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk to it, okay? While Grant does yeah. that, I wanna invite, ladies and gentlemen, please use the chat section uh, on uh, your device to ask any questions. We'll try to ask there may be more questions than we have time for. And we've allocated about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes here for this evening. So if you have any questions, Christian and I have our devices. We'll be reading the questions that you have to Grant and Grant will be honored or terrified to answer your questions. So we look forward to, uh, to receiving your questions. And on that note, Paul and I obviously have our own bubble. We um, work together. We work together for 16 years. Uh, we have been tremendous business partners. We're good friends, daytime husbands. Many call us, and uh, we're very happy to keep our social distance from Grant, who just while you were uh, hearing Paul uh, salted quite um, <laughs> yeah, generously that steak. <laughs> so, so Grant, we have two questions from our audience. So thank you, Nancy Lee. Her question was, how long was the steak aged for? So I think I saw it on the label. Eight weeks? So it's, it's, a, it's about two months. Uh, they put a fancy label with my name on it, but, um, <laughs> but don't go well, into that. Well, you're fancy, Grant, but, uh, that's why. So, so this was eight weeks, right? Okay, and, and how much does that steak weigh is another question from one of our viewers. Um, Francis, thank you. This is uh, 18 to 20 ounces. That's what I asked for, 18 to 20 ounce steak. So um, it's about ten dollars an ounce. It, 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 yeah, it's yeah. it's water. <laughs> it's about fifty dollars a pound, maybe a bit more. And why no oil? I have to admit that's a good question because I always now I've made an error. I've always oiled the steak before putting it on. Why did you not oil? Why? It? Why? Why? Because I don't know how to but, cook. Oh, see, <laughs> no, that's not true. I know you're a very good barbecue. Yes, thank like, you. From experience, I know you are. Is it, yeah. did, I just yeah. assume high heat. I'm doing it the complete yeah. opposite that you're doing here. Yeah. High heat and a bit of oil. So obviously yeah. I'm doing it a different way or I'm doing it wrong. So here is, you know, this is what we're here to talk about. And this is the tips I want people to take away from today. It's not about this exact recipe so you can recreate it. It's about that you can use useful information, okay? Most people are taught to cook a steak. If you're cooking it in a pan, to, to cook it in a hot pan on one side the whole way and then flip it over and cook it on one the other side for the rest of the way and that's it um and then a lot of people like to put oil into it right? i know and the thing and is a green this steak, egg this green egg okay. mania oh it's, but you know like this steak has so much fat in it right. that it's going to render out okay? okay and a cast iron pan which is one of my favorite culinary tools. If you don't have one of these, he's kitchen. hugging that like yeah. he's big. Like, you need like a thick <laughs> one. Don't be jealous, children. You need a thick, heavy one. Okay, you never put this in the dishwasher. Worst pet no. peeve, right? It rusts. At the end of the day, after you're done using it, is actually when you oil your pan. At the end At of the, the end, day, it doubles you go, as a burger. You go wash it. A little bit of water. Device. No soap. Because this is, you know, this is not like a, a, a steel pan. So like this a, becomes the soul of your house. Th this sucks in flavors like meats and fish and, and oils, right? And dishwasher. That's right. You want to kind of make sure it's dry and oil it. So, so we have two technical questions. Yeah. Correct. What we do have of, to do some cooking at some What point. kind of salt did you use that you yeah. sprinkled That's very right. generously? That's right. Steak? And then what temperature did you set the oven? At? Perfect. Kosher salt, you know, 
This is doubled in price. Apparently, like with stocks and everything else during the pandemic, the kosher salt has disappeared and now it's like $12 a box. But the kosher salt, okay, is not like your traditional table salt. It's softer, okay, and it's treated differently. So you can actually use more as opposed to the iodized salt, okay? So if and you have iodized salt, salt at here. home, and That's it right. has quite a bit of a different texture than the malt salt you have there. The That's right. Salt. And then this is Malden salt, which is a finishing salt. Okay. So, um, so this is a softer salt and this is also a thicker steak. Okay. A thinner steak, you know, you have more surface area or the same surface area, but you have l less interior. So you do season based on how much steak you're not actually getting right and that was a thick almost a two inch ribeye two inch that was one of our questions okay so two inch ribeye but you know a one and a half to two inches is good okay but the thing about the reverse sear is that we have this oven set at 275. Um, it's a little bit higher than what i would normally do this but we do have an hour maybe if people want to stay a little bit longer um, to make sure we cook it. It's also a very thick steak. So at home, okay. what would we do at home if we replicated the- 250, 250, 275. Have you heard of sous vide cooking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. so- Is this our cooking in a bag? That's right, cooking in a bag, a plastic vacuum sealed bag underwater at very low temperatures, okay? I, this was a modern, you know, it actually started in airplanes for airplane food and then oh, modern chefs okay. took it and started doing it, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I worked in restaurants with it. And this is very important with cooking steak in general, is that sous vide cooking cooks at very low temperatures for long periods of time. Like you're doing okay? now. That's right. Now, generally, if I'm not doing a reverse sear, I'm gonna sear extremely hard here, and then I'm going to let it rest. Here in this oven, we're, we're baking it. A, we're baking a premium steak at a very low temperature. It sounds very odd, but that's what we're doing. Uh, because we're not going to smoke out this stunning kitchen, okay? The homeowners and, appreciate and, that. And, and we're going to get a caramelized crust. But the key to this, okay, the key to cooking steak, and especially premium ones that you're going to see here, overnight in your fridge, if you can, put it on a rack or a plate, but a rack is preferred, okay, unwrapped. Okay, because that 24 hours of just air circulating is gonna dry out the exterior of the steak. Okay, that's rule number one. I thought dry was bad yeah. in cooking. No, no, you know, because, you know, when you're cooking a steak, the whole goal is to remove the moisture, heat and remove moisture, and that therefore cooks it. But the second rule is pull your steak out two hours before you're gonna cook it. Okay, you don't cook steaks from cold even chicken, even pork, because what you're doing is you're overcooking the outside ah. to get the middle warm. And what we want to do is we want to start with basically a room temperature protein so that when we do apply heat to it, it's penetrating that middle without overcooking the crap. Hence the reverse right? sear. That's right. So this one, we are reversing this you know, uh, we're, we're going to slowly bake it and you're going to see as we go along that... Uh, so we are essentially disruptors in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's already 25 minutes and uh, we'll see how our steaks so go. So we have here. one of the questions from reviewers. I, and I think I know the answer because you're not used to the oven, is why do you have a thermometer? Okay, so <laughs> obviously live television, you don't want to overcook the steak right. while we're talking and it's already 25 minutes. So. Um, but you know, the thermometer, this is like a probe thermometer okay. and this is great just for, you know, you can set your alarm. So I have a, you know, we're going to shoot for a rare, okay. A rare coming out of the oven, but we're going to shoot for a medium rare medium once it's cooked. So once I, it's out of the oven. yeah, so I've set alarm, you know, and, um, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to take it out around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to sear it quickly and caramelize it. Um, and then we're going to let it rest. Okay. And apart from never, you know, people not starting with a room temperature steak, my other huge, huge annoyance uh, in cooking, you know, it just uh, blow, you know, like when you tell them, tell them right there. <laughs> Listen, when you, I'm just looking at my new mustache, <laughs> yeah, this mustache is two weeks old, um, long hair, but, uh, the 
When you get, when you cut into a steak and it bleeds everywhere and there's the juices, you know what I mean? Like, guys, this is not like, oh my God, look how juicy that plate is. You want your steak to be juicy. Not your and the plate. way, you're, not <laughs> the way your, your steak stays juicy is by keeping the juice in the steak, not on the plate. But what you're doing when you're cooking a steak is you are heating up the moisture. You're basically boiling the moisture in the middle of the steak and it's evaporating. Okay, so you have, you know, you're applying heat and all these molecules and water are, are getting hot and they're coming to the surface and they're, and they're evaporating. Okay, and that's how you cook a steak. That's what's happening molecularly, right? But when you're done cooking the steak, you still have all these, you know, water molecules like active. And when you cut into it, right, all of those molecules are just seeping out. Okay, I so thought you said you didn't study chemistry. I did, I did. So basically you're disrupting the whole. <laughs> well, basically what you're doing is you're resting is when you're done cooking the steak, you let it sit there and get cold for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Okay. I confession, okay. I always put tin foil over while it's resting. Is that a faux that, pas? No, no. Oh, okay, I got no, very but nervous. It, it's, it's, but you have to remember when you stop, when you take a steak out of the oven or out of a pan, it doesn't stop cooking that temperature is gonna constantly keep rising. I don't normally use these. This is for demonstration, and so I don't screw up. I use, I just touch it, you know? Right, but this touch is it, good touch for it, like it, but you know, like this is, this is a good tool because, you know, when you're cooking for friends, it's nice. Steak is one of those things where it's like, okay, who's cooking the steak tonight for the guest, right? You know, the thing about this is like, you can put it in there, you're doing a premium, you're still gonna cook it, but you're, you know, when that alarm goes off, then it's game time. You now know, I have I, a question so. about cooking. You talked about chicken and pork a minute ago, and in our household, my gosh, you never undercook the pork or you never undercook the chicken. What? How should you serve pork? How should you serve chicken? And how do you know when they're done? I've eaten raw chicken at restaurants in Spain. Japan. Uh, yeah, you know, like, you know, raw chicken, you know, I'm not trying to get into some stuff here, but raw chicken is completely fine. Eating anything raw is completely fine if it is uh, uh, a fresh animal and from a good source, okay? Um, so I'll just say that and leave it at that. We have an excellent cook. Cindy has asked a question. She was told eons ago to rest steak on a fork off the plate. Is that an old wives tale uh, or something that makes sense? Uh, I think that the idea, if, if we're talking about that's like propping up, propping up a steak, right? right? Uh, so that's the rack. So that I'm using a rack here. Okay. Uh, and that's to, you know, because again, your steak has juices coming out of it. When you put it on a plate, okay, uh, after you've done searing it while it's resting, you know, you have these two crusts, but if you, if, you know, it's naturally gonna leach out a little bit of juice. And so you're gonna lose that crust. So that fork likely is like, okay, like, you know, prop it up like this, right? Okay. You know, and, I, I mean, that's, I assume that's kind of what um, she's talking Sorry. about, right? So, you know, when you're resting a steak, which we will do, you know, halfway through the resting period, right? You want to flip it over, right? Because you got to remember all that juice is coming back in the middle, but it's also sinking from gravity. So you, we're going to flip it over when it's done cooking and those juices are going to trickle back. Chef, um, if you cook a steak Sorry, excuse me. If you could cook a steak on using any method, what's your fave? You know, I cook a lot on fire. Right. I love cooking on fire. One of our restaurants, Quetzal, is 25 Delicious. Kilo on fire. We cook steaks and fish and vegetables. You know, but I do love cooking on cast iron uh, and making a lot of smoke. Okay. There's drama to smoke. But it's easier to do outside and it's, you know, like Yeah, I do a it's lot of smoke my house. for other reasons. <laughs> it's a beautiful on a house, daily basis. You know what I mean? Um, one so. of our, I'm going back to one of our questions about the brand of uh, cast iron pan. Is there a brand that you recommend? Um, and then John asked on that same note, how do you prepare the cast iron pan before cooking? We know that you yeah. oil it after. Yeah. So those are two questions. Is there a brand? Or... So uh, not necessarily a brand, um, but I'd say where are your sources? Are you getting a cast iron? You know, there's a lot of great, you know, pan 
sets at Canadian Tire and you know house and home or you know uh, home home scents, you know. But if you are serious about cooking a steak or you're serious about getting a nice cast iron, go to a kitchen supply store. Nella, right. Nella. There's a few locations. Nella's great. Uh, Nicolau. Uh, and say, listen, I'm looking for a cast iron pan that a chef would use. And it, it's about being thick. Uh, as far as seasoning, uh, most people will get it really hot, add a little bit of oil and salt, okay, and rub it in, you know, and sometimes they bake it for an hour. There's stuff online, you know, how to season a cast iron pan, right? Uh, I haven't done it in years, but salt and oil, you know, rubbed in. You know, because then it's taking on that flavor. You know, the oil is protecting it, but the salt is actually seasoning it, right? This is a, this is, you know, as close to a living organism that's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is, you know, I can't, you know, like non-sticks. Like this is essentially non-stick. Non-sticks uh, scratch, they age. You know what I mean? You know, a, a new non-stick pan is great for cooking eggs the first few weeks and then, you know, your, uh, your, your sibling or your partner comes in, you know, they start using spoons and all this stuff and you're only supposed to be wood or plastic, right? So uh, we don't want to scratch it, but cast irons are resilient. You can scrape it, you can drop it. Um, One of the few things that ages well in life. That's right. So And us. So, um, I, so I grew up with one of those. My grandmother, all my life cooked out of one pan and one pot. That's right. Cast iron pot. And she hardly cleaned it. And it was exactly. always that same spot pot yeah. on the oven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean our cast iron, we it's always on our stove. Like it never goes into a drawer. As soon as we're done, we'll wipe it with a paper towel. And that's when you put your you know, on. depending on what we cook, sometimes we'll give it a quick rinse. No soap, because remember, it's gonna suck in soap flavor. Yeah. So a little bit of hot water, you know, scrub it, wipe it dry it you know if you dry it really well you don't really have to oil it but just a little bit of vegetable oil you know yeah now we're this, getting this into fish <laughs> so are we transitioning already <laughs> we we do have to do some work, some work. <laughs> before, um, how can we help before we have more questions i think paul and i wanted to really thank the homeowners um, for allowing us and grant more grant so to use the kitchen of a home that's coming on the market um, next week. So anybody who wants this kitchen, who is a chef, here it is, 84 Joycey. Um, but also we wanna talk, thank Wissam and his team behind the camera, Anna and Jamie at the Sotheby's headquarters who are making sure that everything runs flawless. So thank you, Paul and I wanna thank all of our viewers to uh, join us tonight. Yeah, thank you. I, I, so I, ho I, ho I hope it's useful. Uh, we're gonna get back to the steak. The steak is slowly, and I'm gonna bring it out just to see where it's at, so that people at I mean, home we're feeling can... some sort of nervousness so, about this steak. So let's bring the camera over here quick. Okay. So Deborah, and, so this is very apropos. Deborah just asked, "Is the steak on a rack in the oven?" That's right. So what it's, rack? So it's you... on a rack. It's got a probe in it. Deborah, it's um, on a rack. So, but you can see from a raw steak, like it's only been in there, I don't know, ten minutes. And all of a sudden, the sides here are tightening. They're getting a little bit harder. You know, this beautiful fat here is starting to render, okay? What does um, the word render mean? Render means like melt, basically. Melt. So it's kind of breaking down. Um, so we're, we're looking good here, okay? So is the steak. Um, you know, and uh, I never promise a certain color, you know? Um, but I'm hoping for a medium rare, rare, maybe a medium, you know, no. Um, so I always like to do for medium rare, medium rare, you know, but medium rare means, you know, medium well to some, you yeah. know, rare to others. Very true. Um, we deal with that a lot in the restaurants, right? I can you know? only imagine. Um, so, yeah. so Justin is asking. Trending so on usually, Twitter? <laughs> when, when, when Justin cleans yeah. his pan after cooking, he does it with an iron wool. He doesn't use soap. But now he's worried, is he taking away too much seasoning from the meals oh. before, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, sometimes you can, if you're cooking fish and stuff, fish oils, obviously. You know, like I like to, uh, you know, uh, I like to cook fish generally in, uh, you know, the fish I cook at home in a nonstick. Uh, but sometimes you want to do it in a cast iron if you're roasting a whole fish or something. But, um, you know, I, I tend to keep fish for, um, non-stick and then meat for cast irons. It's nice to own a pan that's never seen soap or never been in. Paul, I you know, think you and I are going to be fighting for that pan. <laughs> you, you, you can take it. Okay, guys. Yeah, let's, we're, what we're are gonna, we doing we're, next? We're going to quickly jump into ceviche. 
I'll show you quickly how to butcher a fish uh, in a very easy way you could do at home. Okay, you know, like a lot of people think like getting a whole fish is, you know, you can't do it at home. I'm gonna show you an easy way where you're not gonna cut your hand. Um, and, you know, the thing about ceviche is you want really fresh fish, okay, as always. Uh, but you also want to pick fish like ocean fish, saltwater fish. Ah. Not all fish can be marinated with citrus. You know, lake fish tend to have the ability to have a bit of bacteria or parasites, you know, when but will die cut. by cooking, um, which we are cooking, but we're not cooking. It's a different type of cooking. Ceviche cooks it with citrus, okay? And if you have fish and you have citrus, then you have ceviche, right? Um, and you know, you can add different things. You know, if you like sweet potato squashes, um, you know, that is a little bit more traditional in Peru. You know, the, you know, different South American cultures and Central American. Music to you, yeah. ah, have music to you. you know, so a bad meal in Peru. We're, we're gonna do ceviche verde, okay? And ceviche verde is with this, you know. Oh, wow, what is this? This is regular to me, but it might be strange to some people. Um, these are the components of the ceviche right here. Okay. This, this, you know, these are all, so that would be a we have jalapeno, <laughs> we have avocado, we have lime juice, we have tomatillos, which is part a of tomatillo. the nightshade. So this is like a green, uh, you know, kind of, the almost, skin al is beautiful almost like a starchy tomato. It's almost like a right? lychee. It's called a tomatillo. This is not some, you know, like difficult, thing to find it's just people might pass it you might have to go to a little bit more of an artisanal grocery store but nowadays they have a lot of things and right? in kensington so, market there's lots of mexican you know, and south american grocery like, stores it, like it's like a Beautiful. goose you know like gooseberries <laughs> gooseberries you ever heard of gooseberries, yeah, gooseberries. Like the ones, right so On this steroids. is this is part of the same family and uh, it can be a little sticky um so you know you know you just basically unwrap it okay so and then red onion. So I'm gonna quickly butcher this fish. Okay, and then we're gonna start doing some other things and I'm gonna teach you a little tip with garlic as well. Okay, but butchering fish does not have to be difficult. Okay, make sure you go to your fishmonger, get it gutted, okay, get it scaled, okay? I'm gonna show you a very simple way to do it at home. A lot of people think that they have to be some samurai and you know, do stand, this, okay? Stand away. You, you don't have to do it. You have a fish you head. You did say you haven't done it in a you while. You have a fish head, the gills are removed here, okay? You have this collarbone here, okay? With these fins that have been removed. You can feel the part that feels bones and then you feel the flesh, okay? I'm gonna start here and you're just gonna make a quick cut, okay? Like that, that's it. And then you have a spine running down. This is all you gotta do. One cut here. Okay, I'm gonna free up a little bit here on the tail. I noticed just you're here. pulling your yeah. fingers up, which yeah, I Yeah, I'm just Grant, kinda, I'm kinda, you know. Grant, like, uh, Wendy's asking, she missed this part. What kind of fish is this? This is, oh, I, I, guess I didn't mention it. This is a sea bream. Sea so bream. we're dealing with sea bream. So yep. Grant is just in the process of butchering a sea. Yeah. And okay, so I did one cut, two cuts. Now there's two sides of this fillet, right? Of this fish. Uh, and then there's a spine running down half of the way. Okay, so what you can do is you can feel the spine and you just gotta put your, your knife in there, okay? Okay. You know, and so, you know, feel right here, feel right there. So you right? want the spine yeah. on the one side well, of the cut? I, I mean, we don't wanna eat the spine, right? No, so I we, don't. We wanna work around the spine. So, you know, you kinda get your hand there and you, you, you can put your knife just pushing down and you feel the bones, right? So we're just gonna stay above those bones and we're gonna kind of, you know, uh, and I purposely brought like a not super sharp knife here because I've cut answer? myself on camera before, oh, on live television, and it's just, you know, it's not great, right? So um, this is a little bit dull, which is actually kind of good. So I'm kind of, you can see here, you can see, again, you can get in here, let's see, what do we got here? What camera are we doing here? Yeah. Um, so you can see these, this, you know, this vertebrae here, right? And this meat's just coming along. Like this is not technical stuff, right? It's gorgeous. Uh, there's a little hump here and you just get over that hump a little bit. Okay. Now is Seabrain and, from the Mediterranean? Uh, yeah, this is, this is off uh, Greek coast. Okay. And, so, and is your knife from Japan? 
these it looks are from Japan. Japan. Yeah. It yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. a very delicate knife. So, again, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go here. Okay, I'm going to make this incision here. You know, be careful not to cut your hands. And again, you're going to take around the spine. You can just start with your tip of your knife. You don't have to, you know, you know, some chefs will, you know, do it a different way. And you just start feeling with your knife kind of pressed angle down to the bone. Okay, and, you know, and then it's, you know, it's done, you know, it's off. Now, why sea bream? Why, so what would, you mentioned sea, sea, not using yeah. lake fish, which makes great sense. Yep. We, we only eat wild fish in our house. Why, but why sea bream, for example? Uh, sea bream. And can yeah. you buy it deboned? You, so, you know, this is a filet here. We can remove this part here. You know, this is just kind of, you know, uh, you can see just move that, okay? And then we're gonna eventually take it off the skin, which a dull knife, not having a sharp knife is actually beneficial. But the reason why I brought sea bream is because A, we use it at the restaurants. It's delicious. You know, it's, uh, it, it, you know, most fishmongers sell it. Uh, it's got a good texture for baking and for ceviche, which a lot of fishes don't. You know, sometimes they're one or the other. And, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, you can usually always find fresh fish, right? Um, fresh sea bream, you know, which you look at how cloudy the eyes are, right? The cloudier the eye of a fish, the older it is. So uh, you, when you go in there, you're that's looking a for French a French trick. Right, so we're gonna just take these bellies off here. Okay, these I feel like you need to dig up the head of the fish out of the garbage to see the eyes. <laughs> now, so we have the skin on, we don't wanna eat skin, okay? Skin's great when you're searing it. Okay, but not when you're um, making a ceviche. So now, now bef without yeah. getting too technical, we yeah. have a question for Eileen. Eileen is a very good chef herself. Okay, she's asking: Is sea bream the same or similar as branzino? Correct. Yeah, it's similar. And branzino is yeah. the Mediterranean yeah. sea bass. That's right. You just yeah. responded, Paul. Oh, well, there you go. It looks yeah. smaller it, it, to me. It, it, it's so, si it's branzino. similar, and you know what? Sometimes you're going to get fishmongers that are calling it different, but branzino is a, a very good candidate. Sometimes you know you can order a branzino or this sea bream. This is a gray sea bream, red sea bream. You know, uh, being a chef, that's why I like to just go there and pick it out. You know, because you could order Branzino and sometimes get something else. But Branzino, if you have access to Branzino, it's great. So, um, can we ask you a personal question? We uh -oh. don't have to answer this to personal, uh -oh. but... <laughs> you're giving yeah, us lots of tricks here and tips here. Yeah. But, the secret probably of being a good cook and making people happy is creativity, your life experiences that you channel into what you're doing on a daily basis, what you're doing today. And I look at you and Paul and I were both wondering your, your arms, you're very artistic, you have lots of, your, your arms look like jungle book, Sorry, basically. Let's, let's see how many tattoos yeah. Christian has. Not there, <laughs> not there. But, so tell us, how, your creativity, how, what are your creative outlets and how you channel it into your recipes and your food? You know, I think, you know, going back to not growing up, you know, with, in a food family, you know, I'm, I'm very just open to, other people's ideas, other people's wants, other people's tastes, you know? I'm not doing this recipe based on my grandmother. This is the way she right. used to do it, so this is the way I'm gonna do it, and this is the way you're gonna enjoy it and eat it. You know, I, 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 I didn't go to culinary school, and uh, I've worked under some amazing chefs, and I've learned from them, and I've worked with some amazing cooks that I've hired that I've learned from. And it's always about being open for criticism, looking at other, you know, other ways of doing things and, and, and just choosing the best way. And so my style is simple. You know, I like simple food. I, I don't like manipulating it that much. And I learned that from working in restaurants that manipulate, make your own caviar, you know, all types of things, right? So, um, yeah. My style is give the guests one stiff <laughs> cocktail to start and then they won't know <laughs> and the second one to <laughs> right. so before the, start, before the main we, course we quickly got to get this skin yes. off okay because sometimes you might get filleted right the, the best way to keep fish fresh is to not touch it so you know if uh -oh, you can I get touch the spine if you can get a whole fish you know 
it will last longer. If you get a fish that has been skinned, everything, you have surface area that's gonna pick up bacteria right. or whatever, right? That's still not to be, don't be afraid, but just make sure you get fresh fish or you're buying it the day or the night before you're gonna use it. Taking skin Very off, European really yeah, in yeah, terms of absolutely. how you do your shopping. Absolutely. And I noticed that everything is sitting on ice yeah. and in this little cooler box. And I noticed Grant, you didn't open it it was like a vault. I tried to open it. It was <laughs> apparently child and adult proof, but it's sitting on ice to the very last second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to keep it chilled and, and, and I'm going to show you, we're going to keep it chilled as we marinate it. But, um, you know, so taking the skin off, it helps if you have a dull knife actually, or duller, uh, and you just kind of get your finger, you know, your knife under there. And then you just kind of, you know, like you were pressing down on the bone, you're going to press up on the skin or on the fish. And then it comes right off. Um, you know, again, if, if you want to do ceviche, go the morning or the night before to your fishmonger, ask for the freshest ocean fish, saltwater fish for ceviche. And, you know, uh, hopefully you have a good relationship and, and they give you something really nice, right? Are so, you allowed to recommend any fishmongers? Yeah, I mean, I love using, uh, you know, like I love Hooked. Hooked is a great sustainable seafood store. Um, so, you know, I like people who are really knowledgeable about the fish. Um, not just selling fish um, and sustainable because obviously we want to be able to eat beautiful fish. Um, it's also a pretty know. store. They know, yeah, how, to, it's, they know it's, how to display yeah, fish. And you know, um, you know, I, I use other ones like Newport, which is, you know, is up on I think Dupont, um, Dufferin area, but uh, they're one of our suppliers. Um, really, you know, nice Portuguese family who has been in the fish business for you know decades. And we, we get for our restaurants, but they also like you can walk in there and buy the fish. So, um, you know, again, it's whoever's got fresh fish and moving it. And who you trust. You know, and uh, that's why it's good. So we're just going to dice this up, guys. Um, I have made so many different ceviches, okay? And this is just a really basic one with like some interesting flavors. So Greg, okay. I have a confession yeah. to make. Uh-oh. So I'm not a big fish eater. Okay, yeah. And my partner introduced me The door me is to, over there, no. <laughs> and my partner recently introduced me to ceviche and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to look like a total loser saying yeah. no, not trying it. And I am absolutely caught the bug. You're be hooked. Be <laughs> I am hooked. There you go. Because ceviche is the most delicate, most fresh, the freshest. Yes, it's fresh on It the just tongue. melts in your mouth and you can't get enough of it. Christian, you don't I'm feel a bit hurt. You're my business partner for 17 years. <laughs> you never introduced me to ceviche. And you don't feel full. Yeah. It's easy to digest. Yeah. It is so full, really the citrusness of all everything around it really takes over. Yeah. So it's it's a delight. It's a, it's really a place with your senses. Yeah, and, and why didn't you like ceviche before? Did you just not no, know? No, I or? was just a very stubborn, narrow-minded. I yeah. grew up in a landlocked country, not exposed to too much That's fish, right. and yeah. I was not open at all to raw fish yeah. at all. What about tartare, raw tartare, beef Steak tartare? Tar oh my God, I love nothing more. Where are you from? Where are you? I'm from Luxembourg. Okay, so yeah, so a lot of tartare there. A lot so, of tartare. So I mean, you know, and, and raw beef to a lot of people is crazy, right? So, you know, it's uh, to each their own, but I always like to be open to trying new food um, as long as you trust the chef, right? Um, but ceviche is one of these things that it's like it can be a hangover cure, you know? Uh, a That's a myth. That's an old wild tale that Cindy said. <laughs> a lot of people like to take the leftover juices of ceviche um, and they'll, they'll put it in a shot glass and they'll drink it in the, mo the morning after a hangover. You know that, you know that you fish You believe juice in that? Uh, I've done it before and it's great. You know So you I mean? have a lot of ceviche? Uh, I have eaten a lot of ceviche. I have gone fishing in Mexico, um, you know, for yellowfin tuna, caught it myself, butchered it on the beach, made ceviche, stored it in the hotel room, little oh, fridge. Oh, got that one um, Okay, so we're gonna get this going because it's almost time to get our steak out, okay. Um, I've had ceviche at your restaurants, it is delicious. Thank you. You know, so ceviche, so you have diced raw, delicious, fresh ocean fish, okay. There's a few steps to this, okay. We're gonna start the, the cooking process and then we're gonna make quickly in a blender a one-shot easy 
uh, basically marinate to complete it, okay? So is it the acid of the lime that cooks it? That's right, lime, lemon, anything acidic. Anything you can acidic. You, you can do tomato ceviches. I mean, it's, it'll take a little bit longer, but you know, anything that's acid, okay? But to get this going, much like the steak, right? You're doing the kosher salt, salt together. Okay, the and the thing about ceviche is we're going to, uh, we're going to season it several times, okay? And because we're not cooking it, you generally need more salt for something you're not cooking. So I've added salt. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic here, okay? Fresh garlic. I, I am trying to offer. see how you crush garlic. Well, well, like well, well I mean, I, I, I'm gonna save it for the potatoes. Oh, okay, you are, but okay. This is called a microplane. I have never seen that no? before, that instrument. Be well, careful, great. It'll, take off, uh, uh, <laughs> it'll take off your fingertips. So, be careful. Take off my so this is just gonna basically mush this garlic, okay? I've never so it's, used Do you that, use okay. this for Parmesan as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do it for Parmesan, yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? So, you know, you get a little bit of this. It's like in, a grater. Instead of mincing garlic, you know, which can get a little bit, you know, so. You just, we're just gonna mince a bit of garlic. And this is raw garlic. You know, raw garlic is one of these things, you know. You know, a lot of people say they're allergic to garlic at the restaurants. You know, to me, when you say you're allergic to garlic, it generally means you're on a first date. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, I'll just tell you right now, right? Like, you know, and then and then they order the octopus and you're like, sorry, it has garlic. First date with it you. has garlic on it, so you can't have the grilled octopus. Gar I mean, garlic and they're always like, fruit. oh no, a little bit of garlic's okay. And it's like, Okay, like just say you're on a first date and you know, you know, but that um, makes you not only a good restaurateur, but you're a good businessman. Uh, you know your clientele. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, we we I'm don't usually you. call them out, but we know that we're like, okay, we're, you know. Okay, so Paul and I both uh, like wine. Yeah. So are you one of those chefs that absolutely insists on having certain wine or certain foods? Or are you very versatile? You know what? I've spent my whole life uh, really versatile in terms of wines. Well, I, White I, I, versus red. I, I, well, I mean, I've had my spent my whole life worrying about food. I haven't even really dived too much into wine. Okay. Um, I have amazing sommeliers on our team that you know know the wine, but you know, generally with fish, you want a white wine. Which you, know, you have your own white wine, which, which, uh, which this wine. Paul and I had the pleasure I'm, to yeah. taste, and it's 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 beautiful. It's very minerally. Yeah. So this fresh. is a, a white Prince Edward County wine that I make on my property called Cressy House out in Prince Edward County. It was very um, interesting what you explained to Sam, the ho homeowner, before the difference between cultivating wine in the Niagara re region versus Prince Edward County region, which was yeah. fascinating to me. Even though they're only five hours or so apart, it's very, uh, it's very different climates. You know, Niagara's warmer, richer soil, you know, lots of like peach trees, you know, deep Protected soil. by the escarpment. Prince Edward County is more like burgundy, like, you know, a foot and a half of soil, then you're hitting hard limestone, lots of minerals, colder, like last you week it was Mars. minus 30, minus 30, yeah. um, you know, and so you generally have to bury the vines. Whereas Niagara, you don't. You have to plant them farther, so, so that you they need have... a lot more land for the yeah. exact same quantity of of, of wine. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice here. I okay. notice you're carefully measuring everything. No. So okay, <laughs> here's another thing. Okay, I've owned a lot of restaurants. Okay. I've I've had a lot of menu items. You know, I don't have one recipe book. I don't have one recipe anywhere. Anywhere. So you, uh, you know what I mean. Grant, you're getting a lot of compliments here. Oh. Funniest and best cooking class ever. <laughs> because we do feel like you, we are in the Julia Child sort of <laughs> television just, show here. But yeah, you know, I, I just want to tell how it is, right? So are you <laughs> Julia or Julia? I don't know oh, yet. Yeah, well, the I tongue, think the tongue of teal fell on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for that. But uh, it's it's the mustache. But uh, well, totally. I appreciate. It. So listen, ceviche, salt, a little bit of minced garlic. Lime juice. And when okay? does it start to quote unquote well, cook? It looks like it's already changed a bit of color. So it's it's going from that clear, okay, yeah. now it's starting to get a little opaque. Basically breaking it down. It's breaking down the proteins. Um, you know, proteins have structure. You add the acid or you add heat, they start to, you know, fall apart and lose that structure. That's what's happening here during the cooking process. Okay, so we've started this. Uh, I'm going to just put it to the side here for now, you know, I feel like, like I have to help out and do something. Yeah, I mean, no, that's great. You don't want, you know, you want to do that every couple minutes, turn it, right? Oh, you do? Why is that? 
Just, just so you know, because this is the marination. This is like the first date right now. Okay, this oh, is like the first. The this is the first the date. Couch. Okay, there's a second date, and then there's home run later. Okay, <laughs> but, um, but uh, <laughs> that's the first time I ever call a ceviche home run. But um, the uh, so we're just getting it going here. Okay. So can so Grant, we have one very good question from. Um, to go back to the steak. Let's go back to the let, steak let, for, let, for let's, 30 let's, seconds. Let's, let's quickly let's look, look at, at the steak. Let's quickly look at it. Diane, who is one of the okay. managers at the Sotheby's office in Toronto, asked if the method you explained can also be applied if you like your steak blue. Uh, yeah. The reverse, yeah. I guess the reverse method. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, basically blue like and this is a problem like a lot of restaurants have it's like you don't really know what blue is not a lot of people order they, uh, they come in our order like chicago style right um and a lot of places who cook steak or have it on their menu don't really know that kind of stuff where they do one steak and they don't really know you go into a steakhouse you know no problem they also have types of um you know they have types of equipment you know at home you know i would say to have a blue steak, you know, you have to have a really good quality steak. Okay, and this is this would be great for blue. So going back to raw but yeah, anything but yeah, right. that but you yeah. said. But you know, I think this this might not be the best way to do a blue steak. Uh, because the thing is going to sous vide cooking, you're slowly cooking it. Okay? You can't help the cooking process. The beauty of sous vide cooking is that it's usually like medium rare at the top, in the middle, and the bottom. That's sous vide. That's the, that's the kind of basis of it, that it's evenly cooked. What we're trying to do by doing it room temperature starting very low is to not overcook and gray the outside of your steak. Like when I see a steak that's gray on the outside, you know, and then raw in the middle. You like, run. That's, that's just, clear. It's, it's a, not the best way to do a steak, okay? You want to see as much pink, you know, the same unanimous kind of color as much as possible. Okay, guys, so we have this steak here. We haven't even done our ceviche. We're behind schedule, okay? We're going to have to get you to start helping me that's, I, think okay. That's, okay. That's, I think that's Christian. a sign that we're having fun. I, I hope our viewers number are- Number one, are, it's, are, it's starting to smell like heaven in this kitchen. Paul, you would agree? I'm excited to We're excited. be the so, chef's helper. I'm going to... Uh, Are going to carve it? We're going to quickly... I'm just going to leave this over here. You like it medium, right? You yeah, like it medium? medium? Yeah, okay. Sure. So I'm going to... You know, it's your job to... Medium, you know, medium. Right. In three minutes to remind me, okay? So the ceviche, again, we're going to do tomatillos. And I'm going to quickly just show you how this works. Okay, and again, no recipes. It's better to know how to cook than it is to read a recipe, okay? Understanding what's going on, what you're going for, okay? So, tomatillo, okay, like a tomato. We're gonna start with one, probably, maybe Don't two. Look like a, oh, I see. Okay. We don't Look at that elegance, how he yeah, yeah. just throws them <laughs> almost behind yeah, his shoulder like, into the... You know, do your garlic, you know, throw a couple cloves of garlic in there. You Carefully know. measured, ladies and gentlemen. Carefully <laughs> no. measured. Never, never, okay? Some garlic, okay? Some jalapeno. E. Okay? Christian, do you want to cut that? <laughs> Jalapenos haven't been hot for like 10 years, I find. I find they're like, you know, they're pretty... Uh, you said haven't been hot? You know, I, I find they're not really hot anymore. They're you know? North Americanized? So you, nah, I'm just like, who, who knows, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, take out the seeds a little bit, you know? Top up a bit. So why do you okay. take out the seeds? No, so that was a good comb. Is Sorry? it to tone down the heat? Yeah, the, the seeds generally are can be very hot. You know what I mean? Uh, like too hot sometimes. You know, depending. Okay. So we have jalapenos. We have garlic. We have tomatillos. We have picked cilantro here. Okay. Right. Remember, we're making a ceviche verde, right? Right. Verde green, right? Yeah. So. A lot of the ingredients we're using right now are green, okay? Well, all of them so far. That's right. Green. Yeah. So we're going to throw that in there. Red tomato, red onion there though, Grant. Yeah. No, you're right. I um, hope he's going to ask you to dice that because I don't want to do it. Yeah, okay. So we're going to get into dicing onions now. 
I'll dice it. Okay, so, what's, so, so what's the difference between dicing it and chopping it? Tell us that. Uh, I mean a square, a dice, okay. and then chopping it is, I don't know, half moons, rainbows. You have a volunteer here. Is yeah, it just yeah. like if you're in Las so, Vegas, the, so you dice it? I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, like, I don't know. Did, did we sign any disclaimers for getting hurt here? But, yes. uh, okay, so I'm going to, uh, you know, you can use this big. You're you know, going to be very impressed with me. This big knife, okay. So, so Rob, well, I hope you're, you're watching. Right. You, gotta, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. Let's oh, sorry, not. I'm just taking off the skin. No, I know, but you gotta, you know, there's ways to do it, right? You know, you gotta... I thought I was gonna teach you how to <laughs> dice. <laughs> okay, okay. So I know that you're so, not the chef in your house. I know. So I know, I hope your husband it's is watching you. It's the only you. decent thing I yeah. can do. Your yeah. future husband is watching you. Do this. Okay, so you have... Uh, I'm just gonna take this steak out now, okay? Um, oh. See, I mean, he doesn't want to wait for instructions. Wait for instruction. and then, yeah. Yeah. Am I doing this wrong? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, you're doing much it wrong. You, you, you're doing it oh, great. Shoot. You're doing it great. You're doing it great. I'll blame the knife. Okay. Yeah. It's not true. I mean, as long as you don't do it better than me, you're knife. doing it great. Yeah, um, I, want, I once uh, beat my great aunt at cribbage, and my father told me that was not a proper thing to oh, do. Yeah? So, chef, I better not. Well, I was sort of getting worried that it was one well, of the I, proper yeah. thing to do. That you're teaching the chef how to dice and then. But uh, clearly, uh, he needs to teach me. <laughs> okay. So, so you, you mine look like nice here. squares. Yours are kind of. <laughs> Mine look uh, all over the place. Yours are nice octagons. No, Thank um, you. But uh, no, that's good. Uh, we don't actually need that because that's okay. too much onion. But So we're going to put onions in here, okay? Cooking wasn't your passion, became your no. passion. But now you're married to your wife who's also a very good cook. Yeah. But do yeah, you I debate mean, recipes? Do you debate a certain way of how you uh, do it? Do you learn from yeah, that? Yeah, we, we can get in the yard, little fight. That's why it's like, okay, you're cooking dinner, you do it. I'm cooking dinner, I'm but doing it. But right? have you like, learned a trick yeah, or two from just, her? It, absolutely. I mean, my wife is, you know, she's a better cook. You know, she blows me away with what she does. So yeah. maybe we should have her yeah, on I mean, next you know, <laughs> She should, totally. Absolutely. So, okay. We're going to, we're going to, um, we, we have to heat up the pan. Okay, so we gotta heat up the pan. We're gonna be cooking in the back of the stove just so we, um, you know, we don't create too much smoke. Okay, so we're gonna get it that hot. What we're gonna do with our ingredients here, tomatillos, a bit of raw garlic, um, some cilantro, and some jalapenos. We're gonna just start to blend it up with lime juice. Ah, okay. Why is that? Because we've initiated stage one, okay, first base here getting going but what's actually happening is that the fish is sucking up the citrus right and the fish and it, it's now starting is, to cook for our viewers is turned white so this is turning white okay um it still can cook you can eat it now you could eat it raw yeah you know um and uh but now we're gonna start adding more flavor you know i'm kind of used to this but you know this is something where you can just start and um you know, and then you just want to look for the consistency. Really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get some, you know, nice garlicky, a uh, little bit spicy and green shredded cilantro lime juice, right? Like that's all that's going on here. So we're just going to quickly, you know what I mean? Like that I was like, we were making margaritas. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, that's it. That's it. That was like wishful thinking. Um, <laughs> That's it, and you know, like, and it looks quite coarse. Yeah, you want it, you want it to stay coarse. You want it to stay rustic, you know. And yeah, you, you want to try that? I'm, I'm sure it's a jolt. Sure. Any, anyone looking for a pick me up here? If I'm if I'm boring you, you know, this will help. It, it's not exactly COVID friendly. Delicious. But we're all in a, in, no, these are in these are me. Right. So now we need a bit of salt in there. Okay. All right. Ooh, okay. That's. Right, it's a, it's a little, little spice, right? Pungent. Okay, delicious. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bit here. Okay, and now all of a sudden, carefully measured. Okay, now we're kind of getting. <laughs> you know, you don't need to measure. If you're measuring, you know, like measuring is great for pastries, but when you're cooking, you should be cooking. You should be knowing what you're doing, enjoying what you're doing, tasting along the way. All of a sudden, this looks delicious. This is. It you know, smells delicious even. For this you. is like where, uh, okay, so now we got a smoking pan here, but you know, like this is, you know, this is just flavor, you know, like I, I, I can feel the sun beating on my back, you know, on a cold beer right now, right? You realize we are- but We have like two feet of snow out there, but uh, 
So put, I'm gonna put that to the side. Okay. Okay, it's not done, but it's looking great. This steak has been out of the oven, okay? Add a couple of my onions. Too. I'm just gonna show the camera here how this is rendered. <laughs> okay, you can see that it's, you know, still nice and pink in there. Okay, nice jelly. This is basically, when you're aging a steak, you're aging whole chunks of meat and you're covering it in mold, okay? Like mold and that flavor like salamis, right? Like that's what's going on. And that's what's actually breaking down the protein and making it tender, right? And that's two weeks, right? Eight, eight, one weeks, eight, eight, eight weeks, weeks, so eight two weeks, months, eight, sorry. Yeah. eight weeks. At least two months. And it's a ribeye steak. It's, I mean, it's just amazing. It's, it's no, so. I'm sure our viewers are gonna ask that. I can see that pan starting to smoke. What temperature right. do you have that on? Uh, who, what, who knows? You know, a thousand okay. degrees, 800 degrees. But high. You know, like when you're, when you're cooking meat, you want something to be smoking, okay? And we might smoke it out. We're gonna turn on the hood. It's gonna get a little bit loud. Okay, a lot of people like to put oil in pans. No, I don't. Cast iron, you don't need it. This fat is gonna render into this pan. We just okay. got another question here. Yeah. Are we dealing with dry aged meat? That's right, dry aged, aged, dry aged. I, yeah, what's I, the difference between the two? Wet, wet aged is aged in a bag. Yes. Uh -oh. Kind of like enzymes, you know, like, uh, you know, the kind of blood and the liquid and kind of ages in there, like bacteria enzymes. Uh, I don't do, uh, I don't tend to, there's no funk on it. It can tenderize the steak, but it's not giving it funk. Okay, and funk in aged meat is good. Funk in your fish, not so good. You know what right. I mean? Right. Right? You don't want to smell funk, but you want to smell funk. Like, you know, it's, you know, smell this. Like, I mean, it mm, delicious. smells funky, right? It's, 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 it's I mean, that's yeah. what, the, that's tried and true. So we're going to get this on. Okay, we're going to put the hood on. Okay. If you have a bad hood, this is not a bad hood, but if you had a bad hood, okay, I've worked in restaurants with home kitchen hoods steering foie gras at the Black Hoof. You know, we had a little home one. Uh, this is how we would steer foie gras. Super hot pan. Drop it down. Okay. Get it really hot. Okay. If you're desperate and you don't want the smoke alarm, you just hold it up here. You know, that's, this is, this is like, you know, because the heat is already in the cast iron right. pan. Exactly, right? Like the firemen um, are standing by. <laughs> so a common misconception is that you have to keep this steak, you know, steering for so long on one side. Like sous vide cooking, I like to um, I like to flip it every 20, 30 seconds. You see the caramelization oh, in 20 but seconds chef, already? Why are you doing it the reverse way? You started off by telling us we're doing it a reverse sear. What, yeah. what are the reasons for it? Because if I was doing this from raw, okay, I would be, you're gonna get a lot more smoke and you're gonna be cooking this for 10, 15 minutes in this pan. Right. This thing's a minute away from being done. Right? And I, you know, so th this is like literally a minute away from being done. Bring it out in the light here, okay? You know, again, we have so much caramelization going on in here and it's, it's been in the pan for, you know, a minute now. So, to me, caramelization means sugar. Is there sugar in a, in a steak? Uh, it's, it's I, I mean, there's, there's absolutely sugars in protein right. and they're kind of caramelizing as well as the meat. You know? Beautiful. Um, I'm gonna do my, what I'm best at, just turning this. But Grant, so, it doesn't smell what you're usually accustomed to smelling when you cook a steak. Well, because a lot of that has kind of gone, you know, in the oven, right? You've already so that's started. That's another the benefit of the yeah. reverse I'm, method. I'm impressed at how little yeah. smoke there is. Yeah. By, the, by this method. So I mean, that's it, right? Like, so it's enough to feed a know, family of four. You know, but we're resting right now and I'm kind of going for a rare mid-rare. Um, you know, this will probably be a little bit more rare. This is my favorite part of the steak, okay? But we also have a couple more things to do. This ceviche is almost done. I'm gonna complete it right now because it's cooked. Okay, and this is the point where chef should be tasting. That's right, okay, I'll end sous chefs. Okay. Then, then, you, then, then you take some wine. 
two thumbs up. Then you take a picture and Instagram it, right? Yes. Okay. But so a, a little bit more salt here, okay? And we're gonna do avocado. I brought five avocados because one time I did a cooking demo and I had one avocado. It felt perfect. It was rotten in the middle, very embarrassing. So I brought five. Okay, this is nice. Okay. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, good way for avocados. You can just do this, make sure you don't stab your finger. You can just dice it in there. You know what I mean? So you dice it in. Okay, you just the fruit. You, you're fruit? just slicing it here, right? I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Okay. What we're going to do is we're just going to uh, spoon it out. Okay, you just take a nice big spoon and you spoon it out, and then you got your diced. You have your diced avocado ready to go. Okay. So. Delicious. Okay, so avocado is such an amazing delicious product. The problem with avocado is it requires so much salt or it takes, it will suck the life out of here. So we're gonna mix so it in. So tell us how you choose your avocado in the yeah. store. How do because I know they're either is... too ripe or not ripe enough when you go to the store. See, the, the th that's your first mistake. The avocado chooses you, okay? It tells you when it's ready, you know? So you buy under ripe avocado. Because... Does anyone have a Kleenex? I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you buy under ripe avocado and you put it over there at room temperature, never in the fridge, and you ah. wait You wait till it tells you it's ready and that's when you can have avocado toast. And how does it tell you? Well, by being black-er, like dark, right? Because avocados generally can be green, Hola. right? Hola. Hola. Green so, when you're underripe, feeling, you know, like... Yeah, that feels... You know? Sometimes they say when you go with your thumb past this part, it comes out very easy mm -hmm. that it's ready. Is that also an old wife still? You know, I, uh, you know, this is a, could be a new technique I'm learning here. <laughs> when but. this comes off without you having to force it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love your avocado so, so don't very take it from me. Terrible way of saying you know, no, Christian. No. No. What happens if you had one and it didn't have it? You know, like then it's ripe. Then, then it's not cool. I, I mean, it's a lot of people like to touch this for steaks. You know what I mean? Whatever That's it is. That's how I do it. I, I don't know what it is. I have no idea if it works, but I do it. So, this steak has been resting, right? Remember, the juices are bubbling. They're coming up. Okay, we're gonna flip it over. Okay, we're about five to seven minutes. Quickly. Ah, you didn't do my trick of the tin foil. No, 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 because you know I'll usually do tin foil if. Um, you know, if I'm outdoors or if it's a little bit cold or drafty oh, like my okay. house is. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick potatoes, okay? Fingerling potatoes. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of overcooked them in salt water so that they're soft. And then we're just going to cook them in a little bit of garlic, oil, and thyme, and some butter maybe. And that's it. So uh, you, you, you said I overcooked them. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of, you know, I've let them go and then I've let them sit in this water, you know, hot water to kind of cool down. They're not like overcooked, but, you know, like it's okay to overcook potatoes. So we have raw fish, thing, undercooked yeah. beef and overcooked potatoes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So we got this going. I'm going to take these potatoes out quickly. Okay. <laughs> Again, remember when you're cooking potatoes, you start with cold water and salt. When it comes up to a boil, you make sure you taste your water. It should be salty, okay? It should taste almost like the sea, okay? My favorite so, potato. So this ceviche is, the only thing I like to do, sometimes you avocado, if you want a creamy ceviche, you can start kind of beating it. I like you know the I mean? texture. You, you can start, I like the cleaner right oh. now and it, you know, but, this is looking great. I think it was improved when I added my three tiny pieces of onion. <laughs> Absolutely, go for it. But so we're gonna put a little bit more lime juice, okay? And we're gonna put lime on the side, okay? Just sometimes after the ceviche is done and before serving it, I like to just bump up the acid mm. uh, just to give it a sharp little notes, okay? Um, and then we're just gonna plate it. Okay, and you guys can munch on it. Okay, being the chef, I won't eat it as always. You know what I mean? We just get to taste it. Okay. 
this stuff doesn't have to be difficult, okay? You know, fancy restaurants are great, but I like simple food, you know, and, uh, and you can just put chips, you know? No, no just chi chips on the side, you know, uh, extra oh, onions if yes, you want. I did it you know, as I mean, sort of the fine. decor thing for your ceviche. But you know, you can, you know, you can garnish it, but you know, simple is best. And you know, that's really gonna speak for itself. Um, Beautiful. Right there. Now, Grant, um, how do you see the restaurant scene in Toronto sort of evolve maybe, or sort of start again, then evolve um, after this pandemic? What do you see, what, what trends do you hear about, do you see? Yeah, I mean. Going back to basic, simple food, wholesome food. I think, uh, you know, we're a resilient group. You know what I mean? I think uh, restaurant tours we're, we're we're very resilient. You know what I mean? We uh, it's already a really tough business, and the pandemic has clearly you know made it even tougher. But uh, and it's broken some of us. You know, it's been a tough year for me. You know, I've hit some high and lows. But you know what? You, you, you know the people we work with, and you know you working with team of realtors. You know one day you can be down, but you know your your partners bring you up, and that's in the restaurant. And um, it's a team. You know I think that restaurants are the one of the worst affected, but yes. we'll also be one of the first to bounce back because nothing, you know, reminds you more about normalcy, you know, than going out for a cocktail and a great meal. With your friends. And the joy of doing that with friends. That's right. So, um, you know, I think we've all been forced to be very creative. There's going to be a lot more takeout options, a lot more kind of, you know, kits and stuff. I think restaurants have essentially found uh, new, new avenues of revenue that are, are just keeping us afloat now, but in the end, they, they might actually, we may actually make more money service. down the road, right? So, so there's new opportunities have been created. So Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. ceviche to go. <laughs> how did you keep yourself through this pandemic? How did you keep your mind healthy? How did you keep yourself positive? Christian, I, you said you liked ceviche. I want to see. I think, uh, I think, <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, mm. it, it was really, uh, mm. you know, it was really just, um, may have another one. You know, I, I think it was just, you know, realizing what's in your control and what's not in your control. I can't control if we can open it. How not. do you remain creative? Um, you know, I don't pay attention to what other people are doing. That's the one thing I do. Like I don't I don't I don't own too many cookbooks. I don't really know what chefs are doing what and where. You know what I mean? Um, I, I feel like it's just more so myself. What am I doing? You know what I mean? What comes to mind? You know, if I come up with a brilliant idea and then you Google it and 20 people have done it, it's still my kind of feels like my own idea, right? So um, that's how I try to be, but. Oh, you're so, smashing them. So we have these overcooked potatoes, you know, slightly overcooked, still structural. Christian Grant right? is speaking your language. Oh my so, God, is he ever. I'm just gonna crush these and, uh, you know, again. Smash this potatoes, is like, not mashed potatoes, smash potatoes. You can do this before, you know, you know, you can, you know, uh, Paul, put, you put like it with a pan. One? You know, yeah, go for it. I mean, the potato that is. You may feel better. The potato that is. So, no, yeah, I didn't yeah. do it as well as I think we so, should all smash yeah. it. So, this is the way, you know, we have some great olive oil that we sell at uh, Bar Isabel. Delicious. Uh, Alhema, it's a Spanish Arbequina olive oil. Uh, we're just going to basically, you know, fill this pan up with a lot of olive oil. Okay. I mean, I think the potatoes, right? You know, they, they start to soak up the olive oil. Oh, delicious. Okay, a good way to mince garlic, if you need to mince garlic, is not the way the Sopranos do it. Okay, where you, uh, where they slice it and then you dice it and what have you. So I'm just Doesn't gonna- Doesn't someone die in that? <laughs> I'm gonna show you a quick, a quick way uh, to mince garlic if you don't have the proper tools. I, I, you know, sometimes when I have new employees, you know, and I'm working side by side, I like to do this garlic here. Is you basically cut it in half, okay? And then you put it cut side down, okay? And you see I'm just kind of lining this up like this. Okay, I'm just gonna double check these, make sure they're, okay, they're still good. Heat still on. Okay, but what I do with this is I actually- Delicious. I'm actually gonna use the back of the knife. Okay. Okay. 
I've never seen that this before. This is a soprano so, thing. So when, I, when I'm cooking with like a new chef that's first day, and I'm beside them, you know, talking to them or what have you, you know, and they see me start doing the garlic, okay? So listen, you have, you have this, you have this, okay. soprano, okay? This is for like your macho jana pasta maybe. Okay, we're not gonna do that because then you gotta, you know, chop it down. We're gonna use the back of the knife. I thought you were joking. You okay. aren't using the back of the knife. And it doesn't bruise the garlic? Well, it's oh actually God. like mushing it. Okay. Okay, so, so the juices bruise. are coming so, out way so more. It, it, it's, you know, because then you're gonna get these massive chunks of garlic over here and you gotta dice it down. We, we're basically, you know, mincing this one shot. With the back of your knife? With the back of a chef's knife. Okay. Well, you're essentially chopping, but you know. And do those? And, you know, listen, those you're not going to chop your fingers off, right? So those new chefs take you seriously, or do they think this is a practical job? Well, I mean, it's like they're kind of looking like, is chef, yeah. is chef like, you know, chef does he know his knife is upside down, <laughs> right? And like, listen, you can see it's all minced, right? Yeah, beautiful. Right, and you can go through one more time if you want. Okay, but that's, you know, there you go. So these potatoes. Okay. Get some browning here. Delicious. So what's going on is that these potatoes are sucking up this delicious olive oil. You know, it's not at high temperatures. You know, it's pretty low here. Uh, hopefully I don't splash you guys with any hot oil here. Okay, but I like the skin, right? And it's, it's also rustic presentation. You know, the skin's also helping it stay together. And it's healthy. And um, yeah. What do you use for mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes? Uh, usually a Yukon, a nice rich Yukon and a lot of cream and butter. I think Christian's asking out of complete Very selfish self question. The, this meal this evening is delicious. I'm hoping that Grant will share it with us. It looks amazing. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any last minute questions, please We're send just, them to us. We got to show And this uh, we welcome your feedback, of course. We welcome your ideas on new and up and coming potential ah. um, experiences. So please be in touch with us. And we have more events coming up. So please feel free to email us or DM us. And we're happy to add you to our special event list. We have something very top secret and exciting coming up uh, in about a month's time. So thank you, Grant. You have been wonderful. You've been authentic, personal. Pleasure. I feel I've gotten to know you a lot better doing this process. Thank so you. before we go, we've got to see these potatoes. These so, look amazing. Lots of raw garlic. We don't want to like brown the garlic too much. I like the flavor of raw garlic, right? You know, parsley. Wow. Okay. Like again, like guys, like, you know, recipes for like, you know, recipes just recipes, you know what I mean? We don't need recipes. We a little need, this, we, a little we, that. We, we need to know, <laughs> cooking is about knowing what you're doing, knowing what's happening, and knowing when to add certain steps. And okay. knowing not when not to toss like that. I That's think. right, you know. Don't know, uh, I you, know you have, you know, but, um, you know, and I'm just gonna like... Lovely. Now, the one thing viewers cannot experience, what Paul and I are just experiencing, is the, is the scent of all this. And the passion, oh, the love with all this. Heavenly. So, I mean, before we go, before we clean up, you know, you just gotta look at this steak, right? Okay. You don't have this like gray on the outside. You know, this is a medium rare, you know, all the way through. Well, Grant, it's been an honor. You've taught all of us, and I guess some of the takeaways I got was best product available. Go to your, I, I shop at Sanigans, go to your best yeah. local butcher where they're, you know where they, that it is not a, a supermarket, that you know that it's coming from small farms, and this delicious ceviche, which I can't wait to enjoy. Thank you very much, and we thank the homeowners of 84 Joycey Boulevard for allowing us to use their kitchen. And um, if you want a sneak preview of it, come and see us on Monday when we go to the open market with 84 Joycey Boulevard. Thank, Thank you, you very everyone. much for joining us and we'll see you very soon. It's been a pleasure. Good night. Thank you. Mm -hmm.